you very much for that talk. Um, so you spoke a lot about propaganda and that sort of thing, and you see in the world today in with with the Jewish people. You see that with Muslims as well. Um, you see sort of a mixture of propaganda and narrative informed and sort of driven by politically motivated interests uh, being meshed up with religion and being sold and fed to the people and you see that creating problems in terms of the mindsets of the new generations that are coming up in terms of the people who are going to choose governments and henceforth. Um, what do you think is the best way to declump sort of the propaganda and the narrative from the real message or sort of be able to show people that the, you're playing into the political interests? Wow, that, that is a great question. Did I interrupt your last? It's, it's such an important question, um, especially now. I think Britain is being bombarded by a very particular scary form of this. We're sort of used to it now in the United States, but the whole Theresa May, uh, you know, terror tour of uh, hyping, I mean, it's well established and many smarter reporters than I am have documented how this gigantic industry that I call War Inc. basically can only profit the way it's been profiting, which is profits are up 45% since um, the Ukraine and Gaza for the war industries in America, if we are scared to death of a threat. And the threat, the global threat that is being hyped is based on Islamophobia right now. Um, it could be anyone, but that's what's been sort of designated in a way. So I'm not saying there isn't Muslim terrorism, there is, um, but I'm saying that in the media and now in Britain you're seeing a lot of um, hyped stories, stories that don't check out when you report them out properly, um, that are designed to scare you in Britain to death so that you give up your civil, li civil liberties, which is going on around the world in Australia and Canada, same laws are being passed in the United States to crush civil liberties, make protest harder, crack down on free assembly, and also to, to, in the name of terror fighting, allow the government to do whatever the hell it wants with your privacy, with your um, freedom, and make a bunch of money for not you. <laughs> so I guess there are a number of ways. I mean, I'm very passionate about citizen journalism because if you teach people how to be good journalists and avoid rumor uh, and document things with double sources, you take away the writing of history from the gatekeepers who are incre increasingly owned by the same people like General Electric who profit from endless war. Um, but I think also just don't believe anything you're told, find out for yourself. And what I mean is with Islamophobia, for instance, um, you know, read the Quran, take a class in Islam, you know, go to a Muslim country, find out for yourself if, if if this picture we get in the West is correct, and that's true of any, anything you're, you're being sold. Um, I think also studying how propaganda is created, like reading, is it Edward Bernays, the great analyst of propaganda, is really helpful. Over time, you just kind of immediately recognize when something is, needs more verification. And then just see if you can find two independent sources. That's the beauty of the internet. I mean, we had, I got in a lot of, um, I got attacked recently quite fiercely for questioning or saying that the, the ISIS beheading videos had not yet been verified. That's not the same as saying they're fake, saying they're not yet independently verified. The only source for them, early on at least, was this very questionable site called SITE, S-I-T-E, which gets half a million dollars from the United States government a year and is run by these Islamophobe establishment types who are connected to the global, the, the sort of US anti-terrorism establishment. So if it exists online, there's one internet, you should be able to find it independently. But no one could find it except through this. So to me as a journalist, that's not good enough. And increasingly, you're getting reporting from major news outlets that will, and you should learn to do this, read the, the text carefully. Like the Times today, they'll quote government officials saying, ISIS is using welfare benefits to fund jihad. So that's an open door to, you know, 
grab all of your privacy, get into your homes, etc. But do they have a, an independent source? Do they have anyone else confirming it? What's their evidence, right? So even major media has, is, is going with single sourcing now or government officials where they really, classical journalism is two independent sources. So you need to be the journalist is what I'm saying.